The rate of fall of the red cells is influenced by a number of interacting factors. It depends on the difference in specific gravity between red cells and plasma. But it is influenced very greatly by the extent to which the red cells form rauloaks which sediment more rapidly than single cells. Other factors that affect sedimentation include ratio of red cells to plasma, PCV, plasma viscosity, verticality or otherwise of the sedimentation tube, bore of the tube, dilution of the blood. The all-important Raoul Oaks formation and the red cell clumping that are associated with the increased DSR are mainly controlled by the concentrations of fibrinogen and other acute phase proteins. Example for acute phase proteins. Haptoglobin. Ceruloplasmin. Alpha-1 acid glycoprotein. Alpha-1 antitrypsin. CRP. Raoul Oak's formation is also enhanced by the immunoglobulin and is retarded by albumin. Defibrinated blood normally sediments extremely slowly unless the serum globulin concentration is increased or there is an unusually high globulin-albumin ratio. Anemia, by altering the ratio of red cells to plasma encourages Raoul Oak's formation and accelerates sedimentation. In anemia, cellular factors may also affect sedimentation. Thus in iron deficiency anemia a reduction in the intrinsic ability of red cells to sediment may compensate for the accelerating effect of an increased proportion of plasma. Sedimentation can be observed to take place in three stages. A preliminary stage of at least a few minutes during which time Raoul Oaks occur and aggregates form. Then a period in which the sinking of the aggregates takes place at a constant speed. Finally a phase during which the rate of sedimentation slows as the aggregated cells pack at the bottom of the tube. It is obvious that the longer the tube used, the longer the second period can last and the greater the sedimentation rate may appear to be. Although ESR is a non-specific phenomenon, its measurement is clinically useful in disorders associated with an increased production of acute phase proteins. In rheumatoid arthritis or tuberculosis it provides an index of progress of the disease and it is of considerable value in diagnosis of temporal arteritis and polymyalgia rheumatica. It is often used if multiple myeloma is suspected, but when the myeloma is non-secretorial like chain, and normally ESR does not exclude this diagnosis. An elevated ESR occurs as an early feature in myocardial infarction. Although a normal ESR cannot be taken to exclude the presence of organic disease, the vast majority of acute or chronic infections and most neoplastic and degenerative diseases are associated with changes in the plasma proteins that lead to an acceleration of sedimentation. An increased ESR in subjects who are HIV seropositive seems to be an early predictive marker of progression toward acquired immune deficiency syndrome. The ESR is less helpful in countries where chronic diseases are rife, however, one study has shown that very high ESR have a specificity of 0.99 and a positive predictive value of 0.9 for an acute or chronic infection. The ESR is influenced by age, stage of the menstrual cycle and medications taken. It is especially low in polycythemia, hypofibrinogenemia and congestive cardiac failure. And also low values are given when there are abnormalities of the red cell such as poikilocytosis, sphericitosis or sickle cells. In cases of performance enhancing drug intake by athletes the ESR values are generally lower than the usual value for the individual and as a result of the increase in hemoglobin. For more information please refer to AC and Lewis Practical Hematology book.
If you are interesting about my video creation please subscribe us on YouTube and also give your comments.